Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode where I've got my hands on a Tesla Model 3. Wait, this isn't just any Model 3. This is my personal Model 3. This is uh, my review of my own Model 3 that I purchased last September. And I've had a lot of emails and requests saying, hey, when are you going to do a review on your car? Give us an update. What do you think? How's it going? So this is what, the, this, is what this show is about, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching. Let me get right into my review. Now, as I mentioned, I purchased my Model 3 in September of 2020, and this is my first Tesla product that I've ever owned. And uh, to summarize, I'm extremely happy with it. Let me tell you some of the specs. Now, I got the Model 3 long range all wheel drive version, and it was MSRP'd at $64,990. Ouch, I know, a lot of money. <laughs> That's why I had to wait a few years, folks. I got all the standard features, real white paint, the black interior, um, with the vegan material, all that kind of stuff. You know, I didn't really go for any options at all. I just took everything factory uh, that the Model 3 offered in this long range uh, dual motor package. I got the 18 inch wheels and of course the, with the hubcaps, now the hubcaps are off, the aero caps. I like them actually, I actually like to run without them most of the time. So really nothing special as far as anything addition or options for my Model 3. Now, as I mentioned, this is the dual motor all wheel drive. And of course, all EVs and especially Teslas have just a single drive transmission, forward and reverse, and you can shift on the fly below a certain speed. Um, I really like it because it does have a lot of usable space in the vehicle, as seating for five people, you know, four comfortably, five in a pinch, not a problem. Has good uh, cargo capacity with a trunk space of 16 cubic feet. 424 liters or 85 cubic feet with the seats down, uh, producing almost 2,400 liters of space. Now, Tesla, of course, came out with the frunk, which is the front truck, their the trunk. They were the first ones to do that. And of course, uh, the Model 3 has that in a two cubic feet or about five liters of space. Hey, it's good enough to put a few things. I keep my, my reusable grocery bags and a few things in there from time to time. Now, as I mentioned, this is the long range Tesla Model 3 that I got that has a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, with using the 2170 cells still for a total of 4,416 cells, just in case you're wondering how many uh, are in the Tesla Model 3 long range battery pack. Um, it does support charging up to 11 kilowatts of level one and level two for AC and DC fast charging up to 250 kilowatts, which is sweet when you're going on a road trip. So that pack size gives an EPA range of about 300 miles or 510 kilometers. When I first got the car, it did show over 500 kilometers. Uh, I got it in September, so I haven't really had a chance to run it in warm temps. It was already getting into the fall and we had the winter and we're just getting some heat now this week here in Southern Ontario. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll see how it does. But you know, I'm at about 90% charge. I don't charge it to full every night. Um, when I do charge it, and it's not every night, I only charge it to about 85 or 90 percent, and I'm sitting at around the 430, 440 kilo, uh, kilometer range right now at that charge. So I would assume if I went to 100 that I'd probably get close to 500 right now. And the all-wheel drive motors do propel this Tesla pretty quick, 0 to 100, or about 62 miles an hour in about 4.5 seconds, 4.4, 4.5, depending on which website you go to. Um, it is a fast car, so it's, fa it's too fast for me, folks, to be honest. I actually run it in chill mode uh, because I don't want the Jackrabbit's acceleration. Uh, you know, I, I put it on if I need to, if I feel uh, maybe I need to pass somebody in the highway. But it's got plenty of juice even in chill mode, and it does really, really well in all-purpose driving. And again, on that interior that I have, it's the black interior with the vegan material. I love the expansive glass route. It does get warm, but it, I love the airiness of the cabin. And I do like the minimalistic feel of the cabin. Uh, some people, you know, it's a hit and miss to get used to. I found no problem in getting used to it. It only took me a few minutes to figure out everything and easy to find information. And now it's just second nature. It becomes, you know, muscle control almost, memory muscle. Um, I love the, the HVAC system. Works really well for heating and for cooling. I love those uh, weird vents that they have. Premium Auto is awesome. I, I, I think I'm going deaf because I run it so high. I'm always blowing the speakers and having it uh, playing my 80s music quite loud, which I love. Uh, the, front, the seats are very, very comfortable. I've had no issues in, in the comfort level being able to uh, multiple adjust both front and passenger uh, in the front seats to unlimited uh, types of uh, settings. And with the, of course, and I love having the 
uh, profile so that you can set all the mirrors and uh, the side mirrors and the seat, the driver's seat and the steering wheel to what you like and save it as your profile so when you get in and out, if somebody changes it, uh, I can put it back. That was always an issue between me, me and my wife because we're such physically different in size. Um, she's very petite and I'm, as you can see, large. <laughs> um, you know, it's always nice to be able to have those settings that go back and forth. So let me now take you for a quick drive in it and give you my overall driving impressions. All right, so let me give you my driving impressions of my own Model 3. Um, as I mentioned, I've got over 12,000 kilometers on it. In fact, I should look it up now. It's approaching 12,500 kilometers uh, right now around the middle of May. So the month's not over, so I haven't really calculated it into my uh, financial costs that I mentioned um, that I'll be talking about on the show. Uh, but the overall um, efficiency of this is six, 169 watt hours per kilometer. So that's the drive, almost 12,500 kilometers. 169 watt hours per kilometer. You can convert that to whatever measurement you like. I know another good one we like to use here in Canada is uh, 16 point, that would equate to 16.9 uh, watt hours per 100 kilometers as uh, well, so that's pretty good. Uh, and again, that's overall since the life of this vehicle. So I purchased, uh, picked it up in mid September of 2020 and had the fall, the winter, and the spring. And we're just starting now in the middle of May, starting to get some warmer temps. The last couple of days have been consistently around the 20 21 degrees Celsius mark uh, during the day, and at night it's still getting cooler though, dropping down to sub uh, you know five degrees Celsius or so. We're still getting some frost warnings. So the, I haven't really had an opportunity to drive this vehicle during nice, ideal, summer, warm conditions. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that efficiency go even lower. I can tell you that on one nice day we had a couple of weeks ago, I was able to do a daily drive and get the efficiency down to about 10, uh, about 108, which I thought was really good, like 10.8. I thought that was fantastic. So. Um, I'm going to work on seeing how good I can get my efficiencies down um, through my normal driving. So about performance, uh, I drive it in chill mode, but I'm going to take it off chill mode for a sec here and put it in standard. And I'm just going to launch it and hopefully nothing will go flying in this car because everything seems to be bolted down. But uh, I'll show you what kind of acceleration it has. pretty quick and again I don't typically drive like that because I like to maintain some efficiencies but it's got plenty of get up and go I'm gonna put it back to chill mode you know it's just it's just like okay, and I look at cars folks it's just getting in and utilizing them you know doing what you're supposed to do do your errands go to work take the kids uh, to their clubs or to school or whatever I mean that's what these that's what vehicles are for right to help us in our daily lives and that's what I look at this vehicle you know how is it as a daily driver it's a fantastic daily driver you know I don't have to really worry about range I've got more than enough range to uh, I haven't charged it for a couple of days and I'm at 300 kilometers right now of range and um, you know I don't even really think about it on a day-to-day -day basis I have a couple things coming up in the pros and cons that I'll talk about um, one of them being the suspension so I'll mention it there, but again, otherwise everything is easy to reach. The menu systems are very nice. I do like the new design that they added to this layout a little while ago, moving some things around. Uh, so it's just a very competent and capable vehicle um, to take you anywhere that you want. Um, the fit and finish has been, has been really good, as I mentioned. I, don't, I haven't had any squeaks and rattles, so I'm very pleasant with that. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not really whole sure what you're wanting me to say folks and if you have questions please ask but you know there's lots of driving videos out there uh, this is a very capable car and, and probably one of the other main reasons that I wanted to go with the Model 3 was it is rated as as one of the safest vehicles out there not just a safe vehicle but as one of the safest and to me when I'm carrying my precious family around who mean the world to me I want to provide as much safety as I can to them well, hopefully I you know, added a few little tidbits of information in my overall driving impressions. It is a good car. There's no doubt about it. Again, the main reason I got 
this vehicle is because I wanted something with the largest battery uh, range possible. And of course, Tesla still owns that market to a degree based on the size of the battery you get and the efficiencies. So from a costing perspective, I've had this car for over eight months. I put over 12,000 kilometers on it. Um, my fuel cost, which is the electric charging, has cost me $270 Canadian. That's correct, $270 Canadian to go 12,000 kilometers, just a bit over. 99% of that is home charging, so it's very reasonable on the off-peak where I charge it overnight uh, with my level two Tesla charger. My maintenance costs have been zero. I haven't had to spend a dime on maintenance. I did have to do a couple of service calls for a bit of a wind noise in the driver's window, which Tesla fixed under warranty. Of course, the optional cost that I have, I bought a set of winter tires, rims and tires. I have the Stealth Hitch, which you've seen. If you haven't seen me install, uh, you know, talk about that, go watch the Tesla timeout. And of course the accessories, those are all optional costs that I've spent. So how do I rate my own Tesla Model 3 now that you've heard all that stuff? Well, if I talk about pros, it's obviously the range and the charging speeds. That to me was the most important factor for my decision. I mean, obviously comfort and safety and all that stuff comes to bear, but having an all electric car that I'm gonna rely on for the next eight years or 10 years or so, cause I'm driving this to the ground folks, um, I need, wanted something that had the most range and that had the best chance of optimal charging speeds when I go on road trips. Teslas are one of the safest cars of the planet but Teslas are really at the top of the, the, the heap as far as safety goes, and that's important to me. Like, not only myself around, but I'm taking my family, which is the precious cargo that I'm always thinking about when I'm driving my Tesla Model 3. Now, on top of that, safety is I need to be able to get out of situations if something goes awry, and the handling on this car is excellent. The interior comfort, as I mentioned, I love the seats. They're very comfortable with me. Uh, for me, uh, the heated seats work excellent in the winter time, and I like the, the looks of them. I like the design. I like the style. You know what? Trevor and I um, did the first review way back when uh, of a United States vehicle, one of the early uh, delivery vehicles to customers. <clears throat> I wasn't so sold on the rear end look of this, to be honest with you. I love the front, but it kind of snubbed, the snub rear kind of, eh, I wasn't sure. But I've grown to really, really like it, and, you know, and accessorizing it and doing some things helps a lot. It just makes me appreciate it more. The trunk is easy to get in and out of, to get stuff in and out of, uh, the access. So, you know, it's really grown on me, and I love the design and style. And, you know, it still turns heads, believe it or not. Now, of course, there's got to be some downsides, right? It's not the best car on the planet, but everything can't be perfect. Well, I do have a couple of cons, and these, again, are very personal. They're my uh, choice, and they're my uh, observations of the vehicle. I think the suspension is a little rough. For a luxury vehicle competing in the BMW, Mercedes, Audi class, I'm not talking about a Cadillac or a you know, Lincoln floating type of suspension. I just think that this could be a bit softer bit more comfortable. I find it a bit jarring at times. But again, that's a personal preference. Everybody's going to have a different opinion of that. But to me, it's important. So actually, I'm getting the suspension changed out. I'll be doing a show soon about that on my Tesla timeout series. So you can check out what I'm going to be moving to, taking out the stock suspension and putting in something else. So stay tuned for that. And the other thing really is the noise. I think that for a $65,000 car, Tesla could have put a little bit more noise insulation. I know that's a common kind of um, comment that you hear from a lot of people. It's not super loud, folks. Trust me, it's not going to, you know, really disturb the driving experience. But I find that the, the road noise, the wind noise, the motor noise of the two motors is a little bit more than I would like to have in a car of this price point and going after that, that mid-level luxury car price point. That's my only really two cons about this. Uh, otherwise, the vehicle is fantastic. So what's the final verdict? Do I give this a thumbs up or a thumb down? Well, of course, folks, I give the Model 3 a thumbs up. In fact, I give it two thumbs, and if I had more thumbs, I would put those up there. It really is an awesome car. You know, it, it's a choice by people that want to get into a Tesla product with the technology, um, and it's been a great vehicle to drive. So absolutely recommend it if somebody can afford the purchase price of these. They have, a, you know, a pretty rock solid, you know, built, tank built battery system on these, on the Tesla vehicles. Um, and their BMS is pretty well one of the best on the planet right now. So I truly recommend the Tesla Model 3, any Tesla product for that point. But because this is their entry level vehicle right now. So that obviously it's a recommendation. Tesla's done a great job in this. And I love this vehicle after the, the several months that I've mentioned. Uh, going strong and there's no end in sight for this vehicle. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show where I talk about 
my Tesla Model 3 and do a review on it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching on YouTube and if you and for subscribing. If you haven't, please do pass the information around. Tell others about my show. Hopefully you like it and, and be able to grow this the subscriber count. I would appreciate that a lot. Of course, always humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Your names go after, up after every show that I do. Uh, and, and I'm very, very blessed with that. If you're interested, check out the link below and uh, you could follow the information if you want to help me out. That'd be great. Uh, again, please uh, follow public health guidelines. We're getting through this pandemic. Get your vaccines. If you haven't, follow the guidelines. Uh, it is a way out of this, folks, and I wish everybody the best of health and continued um, safety during these times. And again, just follow your public health guidelines. And until the next show that I do, continue to watch the EV marketplace. Lots of stuff happening. I'll be doing some more car reviews uh, within the next month or so. And again, everybody stay safe. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.